This video demonstrates how to perform hierarchical multiple regression analysis in SPSS. For our example, uh, we have taken a data set. Here is a data set and this is a study which has been conducted to assess the impact of continuous training on employee innovation. So training is our independent variable and innovation is the dependent variable. So we are here to assess whether the continuous training provided to employees has got any influence on employee innovation in a knowledge based uh, company. <coughs> and next is uh, earlier study shows that experience has got influence on innovation. In the sense people who have gained more experience are also tended to innovate in their work. So in this model what is it we are trying to do is gender, age group and experience are entered at a first level then training is entered in a second level. So we have a two layers. So this is what we call as hierarchical. So in the first layer we have control variables, gender, age group and experience. We will see whether these three has got any influence on our training, sorry innovation and then we move to training. So uh, to perform a hierarchical multiple regression, click on analyze, go to regression and linear regression. So click on linear. So here we have a, it is asking for to give you the independent variable. So the dependent variable first. So innovation score is our dependent and independent. First we select the demographics that is for to control variables whether we see these has got any influence on innovation. So select the independent variables first. Then in the next layer so click on next here so we select the average training uh, don't worry that whether what happened with our uh, demographic variables which we entered here so they are here you know, if you click a previous you will you can see all this so click next and select your training score and enter go to statistics so we select r square change as you know r square is a variable which explains the variability percentage of variability and Durbin Watson and click continue and it plots as we go for a histogram to check whether the residuals are normally distributed or not and click continue then click ok so here is our regression output. So in a model one, years of experience, gender and age group are entered. And in a model two, average training score is entered. So if you look at the model summary, so your first model has got R square value that is 0 0.005. So we can say that this has got no influence or no relation between the demographic variables and innovation and if you look at the model 2 it explains 0.539 that is 53.9% 53 of availability is explained by model 2 and if you look at the R square change so here you have a R square change R square change is 0.534 by entering innovation uh, your R square is 53.4 percent that is 53.4 percent of variability can be explained by innovation and your Durbin Watson is 2.121 uh, Durbin Watson ranges from 0 to 4 and uh, if it is 2 or near to 2 we can say that variables are independent and our first model is statistically insignificant that is 0 
and our second model is statistically significant so uh, statistical significance is at 0 0.05 level if you look at the coefficients so here gender age group and years of experience has minimal relation with innovation that is the average training score has got 0.6 uh, beta and it is significant and if you look at this is a residuals graph so from this we can say that gender age group and years of experience has got no influence on innovation whereas a training continuous training pro program uh, programs provided by organizations are significantly associated with innovation